Hi viewers, welcome back to the course. Today, we will be looking at a problem wherein they have asked us to compute the natural frequency of the system. This is one of those uh, questions which was asked in gate. Okay, so this is the system as I have shown here. We have uh, two massless roads as shown over here. They are of length little l. They are of length little l. They are massless, so their mass moment of inertia is not there to be considered. But we have two particle masses or we have two particles of mass little m each as shown over here. And see this whole system is pivoted about this particular point over here and then the angle between the two roads are given as 2 alpha as shown over here. So we are asked to compute the natural frequency for small oscillations. So the first thing we need to do or the first thing we need to ask ourselves is that let's say I'm slightly disturbing the system and then what the probable way, what is the probable way this system is going to move? So that's the first question we need to ask. And the second question is that once I set the system into disturbance, or once I disturb the system, then can I write the equation of motion that governs the system? So here, disturbing the system means, or you can disturb the system like this. You can simply move this leg this side and just leave it. You can just give an initial displacement and then just leave the system as such. Then what will happen? Then this whole system, these two massless roads and these two discrete masses, this whole system will rotate about this particular point, pivot, this particular point, which is the pivot point. So we know that this particular system will undergo a motion about this particular point that will be pure rotation about that point. Then we can use Euler's equation or in other words, you can say Newton's equation or whatever. To be very precise, I sh we should call it the Euler's equation because Newton did all his laws and everything for particles and Euler took it to rigid bodies. So here I have shown, let's say, uh, this, this dotted line shows you the undeformed configuration or the undisturbed configuration of the system. Then I am just moving this thing towards the right as shown over here. I'm just moving it there and then just leaving it. So let's say this is my, um, I'm measuring this particular variable theta over here. You can see here there. So this is the theta. I'm just giving a theta and then just leaving it. Now I need to write the equation of motion for this particular system. See, what are the external forces acting on the system? These two roads are massless. That implies or that tells us there is no contribution of force from this. Then we have these two discrete masses as shown over here. When this is moved by theta, the angles will be modified like this. This will be alpha minus theta dot and this will be alpha plus theta. Pure trigonometry, nothing else. Now these are the two external forces acting on the system. Now what is the polar moment of inertia? The ma polar mass moment of inertia of the whole system about this point. It is simply coming from these two discrete masses which are at a distance of little l from this particular point. So you can simply add them together. The contribution from this particular mass will be little m times the little l square the same amount of contribution from this mass too. So that means you have two ml square as your polar moment of inertia as shown over here. Now you have your polar moment of inertia. Now it boils down to writing that particular equation. Since uh -huh, I need the help of the figure here again. So I said that this is my positive direction of theta. Then this clearly implies this particular mg component, this mg sine of alpha plus theta component, which will act in this direction, this will be acting opposite to the positive direction of theta. But 
this particular component mg sine of alpha minus theta which will be acting along this direction this will be favoring the motion or in uh, in other words this will be along the same direction as that of the positive direction of theta so this should be taken into account when you write this formula as as you can see over here there is a minus sign here which tells you the moment is opposing the motion of the system in the positive theta direction and this is favoring or this particular moment component is helping the motion of the system in the positive theta direction makes sense and rest of it is simple trigonometry i hope you remember the formula for sine of alpha plus theta if your trigonometry formulae are a bit rusty i would say or i would request you to go back and take your trigonometry textbooks and understand a few basic formulas like what is the formula for sine of a plus b and then what is sine of a minus b cos of a plus b cos of a minus b and all those stuff so once you know all those formula then it is simply plug and chug nothing else so once i do all those math then i have shown all the steps here so you can have a look at them at your own free time for the time being this is the final equation that i am left with here it is now you can further simplify this equation by plugging in for j j is 2ml square now once you do that simplification then you are end up with then you will end up with this particular formula as shown over here l theta double dot plus g cos alpha theta equal to zero see this equation is pretty much similar to this one see here the motion was linear translation you had a spring like this and then you have a mass then the system was vibrating along this direction makes sense but in this particular example instead of a linear translation we have rotation about the point about which this whole thing is pivoted this whole system is pivoted so that is your theta for this particular case we know that the formula for natural frequency is root k by m extrapolating the same concept for this particular system the natural frequency will be g cos alpha divided by root n so that is the natural frequency of the system in case if you are doubtful of the final answer you got i recommend you to do the dimensional check with um, make sure your dimensions are correct so g has a dimension of meter per second square then you have l is having dimensions of meter and then you will be left with one by second which makes sense so that implies omega n or the expression what we have got got for omega n is correct because we are getting the dimensions of one by second which is equal to radians per second which is equivalent to radians per second okay so that is one of the first check you can do the second check which which you can do is that when alpha is zero that means your system will be something like this initially um you had a system something like this where these two roads were separated by an angle of 2 alpha and let's see when alpha equal to 0 you will go or we will get our good old simple pendulum for this we know the natural frequency is root g by l in order to verify or in order to make sure that our formula is correct we go we got an expression root of g cos alpha divided by l so if we plug in alpha equal to zero in this particular expression then as a limiting case we will reach this particular case and this expression is correct because this expression gives you this particular formula 
for the natural frequency when alpha is equal to zero. So these are a couple of checks that you can do on certain problems. I re recommend you to do this for all of the problems because this will help you or this will help you to make sure that your final answer is correct.